Hello everyone, uh, Quentin Coe from Drive System Design. So I'm here once again with you to talk about uh, DSD's control platform and uh, the software interface. So in the last few videos, um, we saw the general setup of the microcontroller and we also got some outputs for, for the PWM generation. But we also need some inputs, right? Uh, so today we're going to talk about two very important peripherals where we use to get said inputs, um, the ADC and the digital I.O. Uh, so I'm going to show you once again how easy it is to set up with our controller and how we can get some inputs um, for software really quickly. So first, as a quick reminder, uh, what's the ADC? So the ADC it stands for Analog to Digital Conversion. And as its name will tell you, um, it converts an analog signal into a digital value that the CPU can use um, well, for the software. So for example, you have a voltage. Um, from 0 to 5 volts, and depending on the precision of the ADC, it will convert it to a digital value, either from 0 to 1024 for 10 bits ADC, or in our case, we have 12 bits of precision, so a bit higher, and it will generate a signal from 0 to 4095. You need to know your powers of 2, right? So that means that for a 5 volt signal, you get uh, 1.2 millivolts of accuracy, as an example, if you have um, a temperature that goes between minus 50 and 150 degrees, so that's 200 degrees and um, of range, that gives you an accuracy of about 0 0.05 degrees, uh, which, is, which is great. And you have the same kind of accuracy for currents. So on top of that, one of the cool things we can do with the Infineon platform is that um, we can sample multiple channels at the same time, and they can be triggered by your PWM generation. So it's it's great for the motor controller because that means that you can sample all three of your phase currents at exactly the same time. And it's very important for the, the, the motor control. And before we start the demo, uh, just a quick word about the digital I.O. Uh, they are basically inputs and outputs that can be on or off. And so we can also easily very, uh, very easily read them into the software. So let's jump into the demo. Uh, I'm going to show you very quickly what we, what we can do. So we're going to read um, some fake um, phase uh, currents, so just sinusoids, and then um, some kind of temperature, and then a, <coughs> a flag that will be like if the temperature is above a certain uh, value, it's on, else it's off. So I'm going to go back to my corner. And here's simming. So it's a bit bigger this time, so I'm not going to do it live. Again, we have our initialization function. And um, so we set up the ADC here. We just drop one block, then the interrupt source to trigger the ADC based on the PWM. Here we just have a PWM um, output, but we don't care about it. We just want it to trigger the ADC. And then what we have the what we call the ad hoc uh, ADC, so it's just going to be converted when we request it. Uh, we have a nice drop down menu with all the the different um, analog inputs that we have, and then we have the uh, I/O pins that again we can configure really really easily. We just need to know where they're connected in hardware, if it's an input and an output, and that's it. Um, then uh, we have the, this is our interrupt from the PWM. And then we, we have a, a nice uh, little block that we use to read all the currents and voltage uh, from your motor controller. So um, I've just converted it with a gain to currents. And then here I've got a cyclic ties task, and I'm going to read uh, my other value and my pin, and I also toggle my um, just another digital pin uh, that would be like for example my hard bit. And so I'm going to show you my setup. So uh, on my coffee table this time, so there's the controller, and then we use the flex RT box here to simulate some signals. I usually have my motor control, my um, inverter and motor running on this. I get my scope with the signals that are being output um, and the CAN case and power supply. So, oh, back to here. 
Okay, so here I've got um, the signals in real time that have been read by my controller. I use um, a scan to read the signals. So I'm reading my three voltages, uh, currents actually, and I read also my fake temperature. And then I've got a digital IO pin, a digital pin input uh, set up, as I said, like an over temperature uh, flag. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's, it was really easy. Again, it took me a few minutes to set up um, and then we can, uh, we can just read lots of things into our software. So hope you learned something today again. And next week, uh, we're probably going to talk about uh, the CAN, which would be very interesting as well. All right. See ya.